Hi everyone, welcome back. We're continuing on with our practicing of the 30 day roses, 30 minute, 30 days, our roses. Um, I want to, uh, I'll change it up a little bit today, a, a little bit different type of composition. Again, we're trying to move fast. We're trying to paint the movement of them. We still have some stroke roses to go, some turning roses and stuff like that, but I want to, you know, practice and practice and practice and practice. This is not to show you how to paint a whole bunch of different roses. I do those in other classes. What I want to do is get you to repeat, repeat, repeat. Break your habits, concentrate on the movement of the color and, and your technique and practice. These are about practice, not to, for me to show you how to do all these. I'll show you some more. I'll show you a, a lot of different things, but this is all about practice, okay? All right, so back to our same thing we have here. Our Hansa Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Naphthol Red Light, Pine Green, Thalo Blue, Cranacridone Violet, Red Violet, some black and some white, my three quarter inch fusion brush, which is what I use to apply the background real quick. An 8 or 10 fusion f uh, f uh, flat is really great for these types of roses. I have hundreds of different types of roses, like I say, and I, I do them all very differently. Um, background here is just slightly more gray. I'm, today, I'm, I think I'm going to start a, a little bit more of a softer blue-gray. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue and some burnt sienna and some white, and we'll push this all together here, and maybe just a touch of that. I, I just love that quinacridone violet into these colors, but I want to gray it down, so I'm going to add some burnt sienna to it. Keep this gray. That's kind of a real pretty soft blue gray there. I'm going to add a little extender to this this time, and uh, just so it's really loose and wet. And what this is going to do is keep the background wet back behind of what I'm doing here, and uh, that's going to allow me to um, work the flowers the roses into the wet background here. As long as I don't play with them, I'll just work a little extender in there. As long as I don't work with them or play with them too much, I will have plenty of time for this to to evolve this painting before it dries. That starts to dry. I'm going to put a little darker color right out in through here, streaked out right like that. That's just kind of pretty. I like to put movement and stuff into the backs of, of flowers and stuff. Now I'll just drop that brush into the water here and take my my uh, number eight and eight or a ten here. I think that's a, oh, that's a ten. It's hard to tell. cover them all up with paint. That's the eight that I have. So an eight or a ten. I think I'll do it with a ten here today. So I'm going to take some of this across over here and I'll gray it down and I'll paint some white into some maybe some real soft red uh, type of flowers, real soft colors here. So let's just first, just, you know, I've showed you some different ways of starting out here. I'll just take some of this light. Let's put a soft one that's going to go right up here. Just a small little composition. Maybe a rose is going to sit right there. Keep it soft, keep it close to the background. And we'll, what we're going to do is paint or what we call lift the roses off the background. So we'll paint them into the background like this. So here comes my rose. There comes that one's going to sit there. Now let's shift the colors a little bit. Let's go into some softer reds. A little bit of blues and reds here. Real soft gray kind of colors. Not too, too bright. Let's do one right down here. We'll push that one down. Now, so what you have, well, you know, when I paint uh, large bouquets or say I put roses in a vase or something like that, I always worry about color of harmony, carrying and traveling the color. So before I leave this, I'm going to put the center here, drop down one third, touch, lift off like this, put the center of this one in, and let's come back out. Let's point this one out this way here like that. A little bit of other color here. Travel your color, even though you'll have one more white and one more dark, travel your color through your composition and that gives you better harmony. Let's go in and make our cools. So come right down here, quinacridone violet, a little red violet. I can tone that down with a little bit of my burnt sienna, maybe even a tiny bit of green. Green will kill it real quick because it's almost a compliment. 
but we were going to keep these softer, which means the tones stay grayer. So here comes my contrast of my depth, and I work it out a bit here, like that. Let's put a little bit of contrast right down in onto this shadow side. Now, you can move your finger. Everything wet here, everything is wet because I added extender to the base coat underneath. So I can use my finger to push and push that movement into the flower there. See, that's what makes it pretty. It's that soft movement into it. I don't try to I don't try to make it perfect. I don't need to make it perfect. You know, like I told some of you in the last video uh, yesterday, I don't need to make it it perfect. You know, people will see it as perfect. Don't spend, don't waste your 30 minutes trying to make a, a rose perfect because they're going to see it as a rose. You give it that, those three circles and stuff, they're going to see it as a rose. It's going to work. Let's put a little bit of that dark right out here. Bit of that right down here, just kind of smoosh it around. And that's when I sometimes will clean off my finger, even take some of my background blue like this onto it and push that in to soften that around. That creates your shape, your original part of your movement there. You know, this is what makes the, you know, like I said yesterday's lesson, this is what I like to, where finger painting becomes really important there. See, so you got three different sets of the roses there, real pretty. Now, we'll come right back up over here. Now, you can go warmer. We could pick up a little bit of yellow over here and put some warmth into my light strokes. And I want to stroke and do as little manipulation as possible. I want to leave these more of a stroke rose. So I put, so I touch it down. See that heavy texture? That really gives me that front bowl of the rose here. And so I'll give you that heavy texture. Maybe touch a little bit more right there. Maybe darken it down just a bit as we come up this side here. Like that. Push to the bowl. Push to the bowl there like that. Okay. You can... You know, push it up and do some, uh, you know, back pedals back through here a little bit. Walk it down in, but keep that movement in there really nice. Okay. Let's get a little more light. You can add a touch of extender here to keep it wet if you want. But if you make your colors too thin, they won't have as much power to model or move around or marbleize, you know, and give you those nice pretty looks to the, to the rose here. There we go. Well, that's a good look to that one. We'll push to the bottom of the bowl. There, got a nice step between my values there. And I'll leave it. I don't need anything back here. I might come up here, soften this down, and just give a indication here. Even take a little bit of my bluish gray and push that in. Soft indication of the back of that rose there. That's all it needs. Okay, different, right? It's different. Let's pull... Let's come right in here and let's pull pedal in. I'm going to pick up a little more texture and do that again. Maybe a smaller one right here. Push in and out there. We'll pick up just a touch more light. Let's drop that in right here, right there, and right there. Let's leave that. Okay. And, uh, so kind of what we, this is what we call the transition. We turn, we start this way, and we turn this way, which turns the view of, the, of that pedal. So the pedal starts out this way, then this way, then this way. So it's like a fan. It goes like that. That's the transition pedal. It turns the, uh, the rose, and that's what a stroke artist will do, how a stroke artist will strike it so that it looks like it's turning. Okay? That's kind of pretty. Let's... Uh, let that tack up just a bit. We'll soften our colors down here. I'm going to pick up just a pickup extender mostly for the moisture. I'm not blending. I, like I say, like I've said a thousand times to you already in this series, I am not a blender. I don't, I don't like blending. I think it makes stuff too smooth. It gets rid of too much um, interest into a painting. So I like to, uh, I like to strike colors and then shear them off or soften off the edges like that. That's to me, gives the prettiest look. We'll just push that up and around and leave that, that little guy right back there like that. Okay, it's kind of pretty. 
drop a softer one in here give it a little bit of a reach maybe a bit of one right out here a little bit of a reach right down just let that just let the bowl just kind of kind of be impressionistic there you don't need that much let's strike a bit of the light right in now you can always use a brush for pushing the color around but see when I put that extender into the background see it's still wet I push that into the background that gives me plenty of time to uh, manipulate the uh, um, the colors now if you want even more time to play with them a little bit you can um, use the globalized colors you know they have the real slow drying time but that's just about enough for me to get these nice you know, uh, roses that I like. I'm going to take and reset, take a little bit of my burnt sienna here too, and reset a darker contrast right in there. Now, I can soften it a number of ways. I can take water, but since there's a lot of extenders still in there, I can take a little bit of extender on my finger, okay? It doesn't move as fast as water, but a little bit of extender on my finger here See how it doesn't eat in, you know, all the times I, I melt those colors together with the water. The extender doesn't do it quite as fast because it's thicker. Okay, that's all. It's just thicker. Yeah, but I can get some nice looks. Now, I'm going to push into some of this blue, and I'll strike just a bit of that right there. Take a bit of extender and pull that right down into the shape of the bowl that I want right there. That's where that pretty part of the movement comes from. You can push in and out, but that gives me, by doing this, and doing this a couple times like this, without doing it too many, pushing it too many times, I get a little more contrast down there. That's what I want to have. A little more contrast in there. See if you can do that. And let's get back up to our warm here. Our warm color. Let's come right in here. And let's pull right down into nice thick paint. Pull right down into where that bowl is right there. Let's pick up some more thick paint. Pull right down into where that bowl is right there. Now push that in. Just a nice movement there. Let's reset this petal. The edge of it right there like that. Pulling right down into that. So these are pretty what I can, when I do that stroke, a little bit more... Um, precise like that precision to that this is what I classify more as the stroke rose okay but painting stroke roses like this as opposed to painting impressionism or more close to realism uh, the stroke helps you understand the structure of the rose because you've got to try to put it in with the stroke see and that really helps you overall let's put a softer little petal right back here one like that that's just kind of pretty, just kind of closes that off. Just a few little petal lights, just a few little movement petal lights. That's kind of nice. Let's put a slightly softer, redder one. Colors right out here like that. And maybe take some color onto the chisel right across here. Pull the chisel out and across. I do this a lot with strokes so that it gives you a different look to the inside you know, of your rose there, and it makes the petal come out that way. So, lots of different ways, but you can see the structure of a stroke rose like this is just a little bit different than some of the other roses that we've been painting here in the challenge so far. And, you know, it might be nice to have a little chisel just right down there like that. So the chisel, when you just chisel that line, choom, like that, and pull that out. See, that really changes the shape or the feeling of your rose. Let's come in here with a soft putty type red, napa red light. Some of our uh, some of our uh, light colors here, and uh, let's pull a lighter, kind of reddish petal. So this one changes color a bit. Pull down here. And we'll lighten up, pull some edge, some light petals here like this, pull in, soften that out like that. 
that's kind of nice and you know you can soften any of the you know anywhere at any time you can go back and restate like if I wanted to take a, um, a little bit of blue for example nice tone softer blue pull that background it's one of the things that I always say if you want your roses to have a lot of interest you know interject the background back into them at some time it helps them make uh, them look a little bit more translucent or transparent so if I push a little bit of that back here like that into that there see how that totally changes the whole feeling of that rose it's that background see and I'm I'm constantly when I'm painting roses watching my background okay let's finish this one up here real quick here Dave don't get all off into this let's just put a few little bits of the light here maybe a bit more go a little bit lighter strike the bowl here we'll leave this more of a stroke here if you wanted to interject a little bit of that background little extender a little bit of that background in there it's a nice commonality to the roses so you see that color travel through let's interject just a bit of that back into this one here so you see that travel through your roses that makes your roses really pretty um, maybe I want to have just a touch more light right across the front of this one that's my big queen so don't want to destroy all that other color there but that makes that kind of pretty there okay and I'll keep this one we'll do one more maybe light petal maybe a chisel right here like that a little chisel of a petal which is really nice to do especially onto the stroke roses and stuff put a little chisel sometimes I'll take the colors well there's a lot of different ways but I'll pull up like this on the chisel lifting off from the bottom of the bowl and this makes the the, the actual petal you know turn up when we do a we do a lot of tea roses and, and um, John, you know David Austin roses I do a lot of them that way lifting off from the bottom of the bowl up it gives a completely different rose and, and I'll use that in a lot of different techniques but a lot of times as I get closer to or if I want to paint more realistic roses than these uh, types of roses which I really like okay let's go into some burnt sienna a little bit of green here let's give our nice power of our movement of our stem here figure out how they're how they're getting over there there you go blur that off a bit sometimes I like to if I have a long area of open stem I like to take some burnt sienna on the side of my brush and just use this and make a little triangle shape here like that to uh, indicate like that might be a uh, you know little thorn sitting out there so you might have little thorns here and there you know on some of your uh, roses and that's just kind of fun let's take some um, burnt sienna and the green some of this beautiful red tone which makes that soft green I'm going to add a bit of extender to this just a nice soft green here and uh, we'll shape up a couple petals you know remember vary your greens and stuff but we'll we'll shape up a couple petals here here like that some you can pull from the base out there too I'll let that tack just a second pull some of the the light edge destroying edge of it I like to do that gives a different look okay let's um get just a bit more color into that got that just a bit dark let's put out one or two off to the side here you know usually the, like the big big rose leaves and stuff grows and grow in groups of three and stuff and sometimes I like to paint them out in three if you don't have space then you just do like I'm doing here put in two put in to vary the color a little bit though so you see a subtle, a subtle change in the color and a little yellow to it here we can use this for a little bit of negative painting and push some of our other greens and stuff around here put a little bit of that nice brush dance that I like to do around there like that there we go let's uh, put out a little bit more of a 
bigger leaf there. That's kind of pretty going down that side. Maybe one coming out this side here. There like that. Not perfect, perfect. And uh, let that set for just a second. Make sure your fingers kind of clean and light. Lift off from the light side there. Just like that. Makes a pretty little set of flowers. Let's come down here. You could use this to close off, put out some more greens, maybe a uh, couple, a little bit more on burnt sienna and green here. Couple, let's point one back this way. That's a nice soft, leave that just soft like that. And then I'll give us a room for maybe a one, two, right off here like that. And uh, give us a little different look. Maybe a strike of color here, like there's leaves right back behind that. Just kind of filling it up a little bit. You know, if you want more contrast in around your center rows here, just add some of that dark negative painting of some of that green around here like that. Green, then green with a little bit more burnt sienna in it. You don't have to make leaves. You just make some movement in there because you have enough out there to say, okay, there's a bunch of leaves, okay? So... A bunch of different ways. I rinse my brush here. I'm just going to come back with a bit of light and set some light. Now, if I do that, if I push, remember you can make that um, that petal look like it's a little bit more translucent or transparent. You can push some of the green right into that and let those edges stay softer there. It's all up to you. We have a lot of things that we've painted so far. Still a long ways to go, but. Uh, we have a lot of things that we've shown you and you can come back and push a little edge but you can take some of that nice um, green into the rose like that and make it look translucent which is a pretty little color there as well but you can see these guys here paint pretty well pretty nice we can take up a, a bit more green and, and burnt sienna here we can just touch those right along here to create a, a, a bit of a darker shadow line. You could use the chisel to put a bit of a mark here for the vein line coming out. See that, that vein line gives a nice little touch. Work fast. Don't work precision. Work fast. That's where the beauty of the roses is going to come from. It's not going to come from taking an hour to make it perfect and copy mine. It's going to come from learning how to paint faster with confidence and then that confidence shows in your flowers and your roses and it and in everything you paint everything you paint there is only one thing that I always tell people you practice and practice and practice and that is your brush mechanics if you're painting something like like I was, which I still am. This, you know, I don't mean to say it like I've stopped. I'm a rose mauler. I love the, the mechanics of the brush and the hand and how it works. That I practice. These I practice for speed, painting them for speed, and, and getting them done as quickly as possible. Now I'm going to take just a touch more of red and red violet. Maybe even I mean, uh, going to acrylic. Maybe a touch of red violet here. And just add a touch more right here, out like this on this side of the rose. Just um, it just adds an extra little spark right there on that uh, a little bit right in here. Just adds a little bit more of a spark, um, and that's like what Pet would do. Touch, touch. You know, um, I've showed to you and talked to you. We painted him in other classes. You didn't bet it. It such an influence on how I go about painting some of these. Just a bit there, like that. And that makes a nice little painting. Nice little painting of roses there. Quite a bit different. But it's really important. Um, you know, some of you are writing your comments, and thank you very much for commenting. Um, some of you are writing in your comments, you know, yours is taking an hour and a half or something like that. Get it. That's probably because, you know, like I said a couple videos ago, you've gone into a copy mode, trying to copy what I do, and that's not how you learn, really learn how to do these roses, okay? What you need to do is, is you need to concentrate on the movement and the speed. It is the speed 
that is going to make you a more confident painter and get rid of all of this stiffness. If you sit there and work on it, work on it, work on it, it's just going to get stiff. Okay, you want to be able to, and where we're going to go, and with my online classes and stuff, I'm starting this whole new series this year because the art has seen, and it's totally changed the way in which I've painted in the last five, six years. And you, what you, where you want to go is you want to be able to see a, a particular color passage or an element that you're going to paint, right? And you want to be able to, your mind process it, and I break it immediately down into how many marks or strokes or touches of the brush. We call them marks. How many marks do I need at what angle and what direction do I need to capture that as quickly and as efficiently um, as possible with as few strokes as possible? Because every time you touch it, you stiffen it. You don't make it prettier, okay? Because this is not a blending technique, all right? There's a lot of things to do, a lot of things to keep in mind. But... Uh, yeah, it's, it, that is what's really made me a rose painter and a landscape painter and given me the ability, like I said before, to paint portraits and do all kinds of other things. And, um, you know, that's what I want you to concentrate on. Okay? All right. I'll see you on the next one. I think it's 18. I'll see you there.